How can I use all the focusing modes in my camera? My image is perfectly exposed, yet not sharp. Why? My images are getting blurred even if I am using a tripod. Hello everybody, welcome to another session of Nikon DSLR Tutorials. In the previous session, we spoke about various auto exposure modes. In this session, we will be talking about focus. What is focus? Focus is actually adjusting the distance of your subject from the lens. Focus ensures that your main subject appears sharp in an image. Well, you would want to ask me now, how do we achieve focus on the camera? There are two ways, one is manual focus and the other is auto focus. In manual focus, we manually move the focusing ring on the lens to achieve focus that is fixing the distance between the lens to the subject. In autofocus when we press the shutter button halfway down the lens automatically detects the distance and achieves focus. Now autofocus further has two different parts which is focus modes and focus area modes. To understand autofocus better let us have a look at this example. Now as we mentioned earlier, autofocus can be achieved by pressing the shutter button halfway down. The photographer here has the liberty to choose whether the camera locks focus or it continues to adjust while the shutter button is pressed. The function that sets this behavior in the camera is known as focus mode. Now focus mode has three different components, AFS, AFC and AFA. In the AFS or single servo autofocus mode, it is generally used for stationary subjects. Focus locks when the shutter button is pressed halfway and the shutter can only be released if the camera is able to focus. This mode also gives you the liberty of recomposing your scene after the focus is locked. Coming to the AFC or continuous servo autofocus mode, this mode is used for moving subjects. The camera focuses continuously while the shutter button is pressed halfway. If the subject moves, the camera will engage predictive focus tracking to predict the final distance to the subject and adjust the focus as necessary. At default settings, the shutter can only be released if the camera is able to focus. In AFA, which is the auto servo autofocus mode, the camera automatically selects single servo autofocus if the subject is stationary and continuous servo autofocus if the subject is moving. The shutter can only be released if the camera is able to focus. Now you would like to keep in mind that when you are unable to decide which mode to choose that is between AFS or AFC, you can go ahead and choose AFA mode. An advantage of the AFA mode is it helps you when you are confused between choosing the AFS or AFC mode. The AFA mode automatically switches between the two depending on the subject movement and maintains crisp focus. Now let us see how to change the focus modes on your camera. First press the I button on your camera to bring up the shooting information display. Now choose the focus mode and press OK to see the available focus modes. Now choose the desired focus mode and press OK again and now you can start shooting with your desired focus mode. Now let us learn a little more about the AF area modes. First of all the single point AF area mode in which the photographer has the liberty to choose the focus area. The dynamic area AF is used for subjects in motion. The photographer here has the liberty to choose from 9, 21 and 39 focus areas. In the 3D tracking mode, the camera tracks moving subjects and selects the focus area automatically. In the auto area AF, the camera detects the subject type and automatically selects the focus area from among 
39 focus points. Now let's see how to choose an autofocus area mode on the camera. To do that, first press the I button on your camera and highlight the present AF area mode. Then press OK to bring up the AF area modes available on the camera. Now you can select the desired AF area mode and press OK. Now you're ready to shoot. We have spoken about various focus and focus area modes. Now let's understand what is focal length. Technically speaking, focal length denotes the distance of the front element of the lens to the sensor. I know this is a bit technical, but to understand this better, let's go through a series of images. In this series of images, we have kept the distance between the subject and the camera constant. The only thing that we varied is the focal length. You will see through these images that how varying the focal length changes the image. The shorter the focal length, the greater the extent of the scene captured by the lens. On the other hand, the longer the focal length, the smaller the extent captured by the lens. If the same subject is photographed from the same distance, its apparent size will decrease as the focal length gets shorter and increase as the focal length gets longer. In the previous set of images, you saw how varying the focal length changed the picture angle. Now let's see another set of images where when we change the distance between the camera and the subject, how it changes the perspective. In these photographs, we change the distance between the camera and the subject so that the subject always appears to be of the same size. Note the difference in balance between the portrait subject and the building in the background. The wider the lens, the greater the apparent distance to the building. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope you enjoyed it. But stay tuned for the next session where we talk about white balance, raw images, and in-camera editing. So until then, this is your Nikon buddy Rohan signing off. <laughs> <laughs>